Good morning again, Manna Church, Jeff Christensen, and welcome to part four of this week's Morning Manna. So this week we've been talking about the all-encompassing gospel and relating the gospel in three primary ways. The gospel and God, or how the gospel drives us toward God. The gospel and you, or how the gospel changes you. And the gospel and others, how the gospel leads us to other people. Yesterday, we started focusing on the second aspect, the gospel and you, by talking about keeping our heart for God. And today, I want to talk to you about pursuing the death of sin in your life. Now, I know this sounds like a heavy topic, maybe a little uncomfortable, like I'm going to start getting all judgy with you and throw a stack of King James Bibles at you while I scream at the camera. And I promise you, that's not going to happen. To tell you the truth, pursuing the death of sin is one of the most practical and necessary components of our life with God. And it actually takes place in two different ways. I want you to think of this first way that we pursue the death of sin in our lives as being passive. It's dying to sin instead of keeping it alive in our lives. It's yielding to God in these areas of sin that influence our lives, giving it up to Him and letting Him deal with it. 1 Peter 2, verse 24 says, He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. So by his death on the cross, Jesus conquered sin for us. This means its power is broken and we don't have to live under it anymore. So we can let it go and give it up to him and let him take it. Since he has defeated it and mastered it for us, we can choose to let it go. He did all the work to break its power so we can die to it. But there's a second aspect of pursuing the death of sin in our lives. I want you to think of this one as active. This is where we look for the places, actively look for the places in our lives where sin is at work, where it has a hold of us, and we determine to hunt it down and kill it. Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 13 say, So then, brothers, We are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. This means that there's there's a vigilance in rooting out sin. It is Jesus who defeats sin. We can't lose sight of that. And we are called to die to sin and to let him have his way, but... There is an active, militant part of this process where it's not just laying down and dying to sin, it's also hunting it down in our lives and actively seeking to put it to death. Now there's so much that we could say about this, but time will not permit. We need to think of pursuing the death of sin in two ways. We need to see where it's influencing us and we need to go after it actively and determine to put it to death. That's one way that we need to think about it. But along with that, thank God that Jesus died for our sins, that he paid the price, he broke the power of sin over us and we can run to him for help and ask him to set us free. Give our sins to him and let them die away so that we can experience his freedom. Good to be with you today, Man of Church. I'll see you tomorrow, part five of our study of the all-encompassing gospel.